Lab Guy here. Let's try something different today. Who remembers grade school arts and crafts? Oh, nobody, huh? When I was young, way back in the days of wooden sailing ships and starting a fire by rubbing two rocks together, we had classes where they taught us how to, to cut construction paper with a pair of blunt scissors. And uh, I remember frustrating the teachers because of my delayed development. I couldn't cut a straight line. I couldn't, couldn't uh, hold the glue correctly. I have some strange memories of my school days. So today, Lab Guy is going to revisit those skills that he was taught so long ago. What year would that have been? Oh my goodness, 1966. And uh, with a vague greeting to my third grade teacher, Mrs. Muldoon. So without further ado, let's get on with it, shall we? What we're looking at is my Roscoe Color Gels. These are special gelatin filters that are made to go into movie lights and television lights and you can get them in every color of the rainbow from a company called Roscoe Lux. What I have here is three bulk gels a number 90 90 which is green a number 76 which is blue and a number 25 which is red these are the filters that I used in my mechanical color TV experiments and we're going to try them out today in some experiments with some black and white cameras and see if we can take color pictures with black and white cameras but first I have to cut a strip of gel from each of these and I figured I'd let you watch me uh, get pissed off at this thing as I attempt to cut a straight line out of these uh, filters. Being that I'm into uh, imperial units, I'll use inches today, but you're uh, perfectly welcome to use the, uh, the units of your choice. I'm already becoming frustrated. I picked up the pen and I swear it was a fat tip pen. Now I've got a fine tip pen. I don't know if that'll show up on these gels. I can kind of see it. Ah, here we go. Now, this is a blue pen. Yeah, that'll show up. I wanted the, the fat point to make it easier to see the line. Now, I'm going to cut some 3-inch strips so that I can cut 3-inch by 3-inch squares. I'm going to cut each filter individually. So, I need to start by making my 3-inch marks from the edge of the filter. Oh, that's pretty visible. Right to there. I mean, this is this is not rocket science. I'm not I'm not trying to make a uh, you know a precision instrument here. We're just going to to mount these to some holders so that we can hold them in front of the camera lens. And uh, shoot some still pictures through the camera lens. There we go. 
the first filter I'm cutting is green. I don't know if you can see that. And do I want to cut this way or that way? I guess I'm going to cut this way. Should I sit down or should I stand up? Questions, questions, questions. The minds of old people today. Wow. <laughs> if you're a young person out there, take my advice, don't get old. Here we go. It's easily cut with scissors. And if you do this, I recommend that you have lots of light. I don't remember what I paid for this material. It wasn't too expensive, but it wasn't cheap. But I guess for the sheer size of it, it's pretty low cost. There we go, we have a three inch wide strip. And we have the nice tissue paper liner. So let's roll this one up. And put it away. I can already see an issue with the blue filter because I have a blue pen. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay, you get a rubber band. Uh, there we go. Just so that the thing doesn't um, fully unroll. All right, we put that one there, and we do it again. You see my pen here, Al. And I see blue pen on this. I can. I could try my fatter pen. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be any better. Alright. It looks like I can see the blue easily enough. It has a it, it looks metallic. So here we go. Same process. Bear with me. That's not too bad. It's visible. My ruler more or less has cork on the back. I need to get some new cork for it. So it's not doing too much damage to the film. What happened? Damn it. Of course the pen stopped writing. Oh, 
and we do it again. It's remarkable this blue pen looks red on this blue filter. and we have a blue a blue strip oh you've got to be kidding me no way I managed to cut the side that has the stickers on it <laughs> ah! oh no really Yes, really. All right. Fine. <laughs> are we having fun? We sure are, Billy. We sure are. Okay, well that's not a problem. We're going to get several filters out of this. So not a not an issue. I don't want to crush these. There we go. Now, before we cut this one, <laughs> let's turn it around. Okay. Now we do the same thing with the red. That is a pretty, pretty color. Wow. Good enough. Not rocket science, but this is how space probes take color pictures, by the way. All right, let's cut some red, shall we? Okay, here we go. Nice fat line. I'm cutting right down the middle of the line, more or less. There we go. A 
I'd like to make a comment about this particular choice of these filters. These filters were chosen by Cliff Benham, who uh, you may know the name from Mechanical Color Television or through the Early Television Foundation. And uh, he did the research for these particular Roscoe filters for use with black and white CRTs with P4 phosphor for uh, field sequential color television. And I certainly built my uh, Goldmark One CBS field sequential color television with these Roscoe filters uh, based on the information provided by Cliff Benham. I also used these color gels in my tiny trinoscope television in front of the three viewfinder tubes that I built this around. Alright, now I'm going to cut these down again least as well as I can uh, into three inch by three inch size. Okay, I don't know how many I'm going to get out of this, but we'll see. It's basic grade school construction paper cutting, right? I don't know if they still teach that in grade schools anymore. Only really too much liability with blunt scissors or whatever. For now I'll cut three of each. Completely missed. 
There we go. Good enough. Gee, boys and girls, it's arts and crafts class with the lab guy. Let's um, get some uh, cardboard here. I think this works. That works. This is just one of those stiff mailers. I want the cardboard. Okay. So Essentially, I'm going to cut four holes, I mean three holes, <laughs> like that for the filters, and, uh, and somehow attach these in there. All right, so that looks good. Alright, so these are three inches wide, so we will make this holder. Uh -huh. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be now I'm using the fine point pen. And it's going to be four inches tall and the full width, but it's going to be folded over. So I'm marking it at four inches and at eight inches.
There we go. Now, it's going to fold backwards. Let's see my I'm not cutting it, but I'm scoring it so that it will, will fold on the line. Just like that. Alrighty. Now, there's three of those for a total of nine inches. And this doohickey is currently, looks like 12 and a half inches. Twelve and a half inches. So that's good. So our center line is at six and a quarter. And we're going to switch to pencil now. Shut things out of the way. Okay, so our center is six and a quarter. will be the official center. There we go. And now these will be like that. This is going to work very well. I'm going to go ahead and place the markings and then I'll be back. I've marked out the uh, card into three squares. I don't know if you can see it. That are equally spaced across here. They're on four inch centers and each one is two and three quarter inches square. The film is three inches square so there'll be a tiny amount of overlap where I'm going to glue them on the inside after I cut these holes through to the other side. All right now it's just down to some good old Kraftwerk. Not the group, the skill set. Now let's see if I can manage to cut the right place. Let's do it this way. Plus I need something to cut onto. Hold on. Don't want to cut up my table. <laughs> Ow, my kneecaps. I, cut, I kick, kick my knee into the edge of the desk at least, <laughs> at least three times a day. Okay, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the parts that get cut out with my pen, with my uh, Sharpie pen. That way, in theory, I cut out what should be cut out and not accidentally cut between the cells. I guess we can call these little window opening cells. I don't know. 
I'm biasing a little bit to the inside of the line because I want the I don't want to cut the holes oversized and then have the film fall through the uh, have the gels fall through. Appears to be correct. We'll find out. If I screw this up through the magic of editing, you may never know it. And Mrs. Muldoon in third grade said that I'd never get good at cutting out construction paper. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, Mrs. Muldoon, wherever you're buried today. My third grade teacher. That is to say, my first pass through third grade, third grade teacher. I believe the second third grade teacher that I had was uh, Mrs. Brown. There we go. Now you should be able to see better where I'm going to cut it out. In theory, well, let's uh, try this now. We'll cut the, the top layer first. to move. Of course it had to move. Okay. I think I'll just cut one at a time. How's that sound? Put the blade back into the cut. That has gone all the way through. How about that one? Oh, they've all gone through. This is a nice sharp blade. Okay. Well, that's that's very nice. Okay, did these go all the way through? I believe they did. Yes. Yes. And yes. Okay. Very nice. Okay, now we'll start cutting our verticals on the insides. to its Murphy's Law. Okay. Wow. Holy cow. Nice. All right. Let's do the next one. Then we'll do what, I, what I'm considering the back side next. Or last. Okay. Wow. It's amazing how well this goes when you use a fresh blade. Remind me to count all my fingers when I'm done. Wow.
Incredible. This is our filter holder. Okay, now we should be able to just go ahead and finish this like this. almost done too. <laughs> okay, very good. Now I have the smooth face on the inside, which is where I will apply the glue to hold the filters. All right. Wow, this this little craft project is moving right along. Now the fun really starts. We get to to glue in our filters. And I guess it doesn't matter. I'd like them to be red, green, blue. Blue, green, red. But it doesn't matter. So, let's start with this end and it'll be a, a red filter. So, I'm going to be using my Elmer's glue stick. Good old Elmer. This could be a problem. I don't want to get it on the filter in the visible area. And I don't think I don't think it's stuck to the uh, or did it turn clear? That's maybe that's what's going on. I think it turns transparent. Apparently. Oh, disappearing purple. Now the fun begins. Now I've got to get this on here so that. Well, that was almost anticlimactic. All right. Let's let that go. It's currently 10 p.m. here, and I'll build this and let it sit overnight with a, a weight pressing it together when I close it up. 
and we'll see if it's completely set in the morning. It's green filter time. of overlap. Like that. Ah! And not too many fingerprints on it. That looks okay. All right. This stuff disappears quick. Alright, we don't want it. I don't want to get it on the film itself. Alright. There we go. And, uh, yeah. All right. And now we just glue the hell out of the, the opposite side. is it. I don't have anything heavy to put on it yet. Hold on. This was pretty heavy. I just finished reading The House of Seven Gables. Don't ask me why. I just felt compelled to read a classic. Remember that other video where I told you about finding free stuff um, along, the, along my walk? <laughs> this is one of those free items. Okay. Now, that appears to be... Could use some more weight. But that's it. And we'll check back in tomorrow morning. Good morning. It's the following day after Lab Guy's Arts and Crafts class. How did it turn out, Lab Guy? Oh, I'd say that it didn't turn out too shabby at all. Red, green, and blue. Pretty nice. The, uh, the glue held very good. I placed a bunch of books on top of it. I added some folded cardboard along the top and bottom edge and glued that as well. 
to stiffen it up. It was, this is not the most robust object I've ever built, but since I'm an old man with a lot of experience, I will make sure that I handle this carefully and I will probably find some more of this light cardboard to make a protective cover to keep this in. So in the next episode we will be using this filter to shoot some color pictures with a black and white video camera. I know it's been done on several other channels on the internet and I will, uh, in that video, provide a link to my original article, which is only to be viewed for the laughing at it aspect. Um, talk about overwriting a subject. It's, uh, it's based on um, Paint Shop, I believe, version 3.0, back when Paint Shop was still free, and we were running on a 486, at 40 megahertz or something. I had a whopping, I think, two megabytes of RAM and a, maybe a 60 meg hard drive. Golly, those were the days. I had purchased a black and white quick cam and of course that was very disappointing. I wanted color. So anyways, um, that's in the next episode and uh, we'll take it from there and uh, I guess uh, the usual greetings to the new subscribers and the old subscribers if you like the video you know which buttons to push if you can't contain yourself you're welcome to comment bonus points if you recognize the channel over my right shoulder you can leave a comment. One of my favorite channels I've been following for almost two years. And until next time, Lab Guy out.